Dear guests, please quiet down. I did say that the seats for the dinner banquet were first come first serve, but one must meet certain quite standards to be eligible. You will encounter different challenges at random times and places. Whether or not you are honorable enough for a seat will be judged on your performance. After all, only honorable souls are worthy of dining with noble, elegant, and perfect Miss Cabernet. Everyone's attention is focused on the pair right now. A selection? Honorable? So not everyone here is going to be Cabernet's food. <laughs> no matter. Let them fight each other to death. It'll get interesting around here. Though, I really want to see who's honorable enough to become Cabernet's dish like me. <laughs> this is probably nothing more than a big magic show. Nearing Lamia slips back into a secret passage as everyone is focused on McGrath's announcement. Ninety-one person, we're almost done. Banquet service server. This guy's still alive, huh? Wait here, I'll go find something to bandage your wounds. Thank you, you're so kind to help me at a time like this. I don't mention it. At times like these, we need to stick together and help each other to overcome the difficulties, right? All right, rest now. I'll be back soon. The waiter taking care of the injured stand up uh, and sees you and Cabernet, but he looks past you as if he doesn't know you. His face is expressionless. He hasn't walked far when he's stopped by a stumbling woman. Please, please help me. My friend is injured her leg. I saw you helping a lot of people just now. Can you help her? I wrapped it with a cloth, but the bleeding it just won't stop. This color, miss. Is your necklace pendant made of glass? Hmm? Yes, yes. Is there a problem? Not at all, but the bandages are all used up. You'll have to figure out something else. After saying this, the waiter shakes off the woman's grasp and quickly leaves. The woman persistently follows him, pointing to the bandages in his hand and saying he clearly still has some. Why won't he give it to her and follows him into a room? You and Kevin exchange a look and shake your head wryly. You decide to follow them or at least help treat the woman's friend. Just as you are about to reach them, a scream comes from inside the room and the woman runs out, of, out desperately. You rush into the room to find a hot fryer with oil bubbling inside. As expected, there is a plate of golden black truffle sauce covered French fries on the table next to it. And there goes another guest. 94% elimination rate. Fucking hell. Where is he? There he is. McDonald's ass. Uh, wild potatoes have been trans transplanted into the east side farm for their good looks. It is served with a sauce made of precious black truffles. The heat of freshly baked fries brings out the unique flavor of the truffle, black truffle, giving a different experience to our valued diners. Hmm. Carol. Someone among us is going to be eliminated soon because I know that person's secret. The man laughs mysteriously. He seems to have just returned from another room, excitedly raising his voice so that everyone present can hear. You wouldn't have guessed it, but I met a person in the bathroom and saw something on her that shouldn't be there. It's quite a juicy secret. I've already told our chef about this and I believe she will soon eliminate that outliner. Outlier will be much safer for us, right, Miss Carol? You recognize the familiar nagging tone. He is one of the people who had previously been hostile towards you and Carol, whom he questioned, suddenly changes her face. I don't know what you're talking about. It's okay if you don't know as long as the chef does. Hey chef, come and eliminate this outlier. The man urgently yells but Kara quickly interrupts him. Huh? So whatever you say goes. Hm. I swear on my game eligibility that every word I say is truthful. If I slander you, I'll, I'll be eliminated immediately. It'd be funny if it'd be eliminated immediately, which is probably going to happen. As if to confirm his words, a strange noise echoes from the void as though some device has been activated. You hear that? She's coming to eliminate you. I was right all along. Of course, if you can present some evidence now to prove you're not a freak, you still have a chance to survive, but do you dare? And the man laughs wildly while Carol remains silent with a pale face. After a moment, she managed to whisper. Disgusting. What did you say? I said you people are really disgusting. The elegantly dressed woman who has always maintained her beautiful image roars in frustration and in her agitation her voice even breaks. You think I will let you manipulate me, obediently showing you what you want to see in your dreams? Who gives you the right to call me a freak and eliminate me? I just like to wear gorgeous, fashionable clothes. 
clothing what's wrong with that look at you trying to look dignified in an ill-fitting shirt it only highlights your physical flaws is laughably ridiculous and you covered in accessories of all styles but with no sense of coordination reeks of nave or reach or whatever that says utterly vulgar Carol furiously critiques the man's attire then raises her voice in question is it wrong for me to not want to lower myself to the level of these tasteless unremarkable people yes but in the end you lied didn't you lied about what unfortunately the head chef does not see eye to eye with carol's defense she could it coldly delivers the final verdict going against one's nature will inevitably lead to backlash i regret to say miss carol you have been eliminated what no carol screams abruptly ends he falls into he falls into oh shit carol screams abruptly and he falls into unconsciousness and lies in a hard shell wait carol was a guy really now maybe he was uh, i'm, I'm kind of confused here but all right all right here we go with the big one i'll actually look at the guidebook first where are we dishonest queen oyster although it's not the variety recommended by our best supplier for the sake of its good appeal it might be okay to present it to our guests garnished with pearls and lemons even if the flavor is really weird it can still attract a bit of attention with visual gimmicks all right Side out of seven, tasting angry companions offered their weakness under the melting ice crystal. You tasted unwillingness, heartache, and anger, all of which made it hard for you to swallow. Battle of oh great, what is it? Oh, it's normal combat at least. That's good. No, that was difficult. I even lost a health. Press and hold to shackle. Who am I shackling? You cast your shackles over and over again, checking for Kelvin and uh, Macchiato's presence. The fact that they are still around gives you some comfort but also depresses you. You recall the nervous but excited expression when you asked them to join this mission, but now you don't even know where they are. I know you're suffering right now. Perhaps nothing I say will ease your pain. But you must know that... The fact that you're still here means we haven't lost. There's only one way out, and that's forward. Yabane yeah, comes up to you, still as tall, as graceful as the first time you saw her. She reaches out her hand to you. Grab her hand and stand up. Yes, no matter what, I must keep going forward. The only way to bring back everyone is to march on and confront that chef. Hmm, that's the spirit. That's how you should be. You brace yourself and walk out of the locked room. You suddenly realize that the entire level is now empty. Have they all been eliminated? What happened here? The rules are all at McGrath's discretion. So this development is... <laughs> unsurprising. I expected one or two more people to survive, but okay. You've also considered this possibility before, but you take a glance at Cabernet. To keep going forward, you must eliminate Cabernet. Oh my, I don't believe it. You made it this far? Haven't given up yet. And you're even here with Miss Cabernet. You heard that infuriating voice again, but this time without any static, you look up and spot her standing by the elevator close by. You have the audacity to show up. Of course. Why wouldn't I? You really think you made it here on your own? You think you're still qualified to win? McBride glares at you sullenly, her eyes full of discontent. Reflect upon your behavior and how you made it this far. <sighs> if Miss Cabernet hadn't been protecting you all the way, you would have died in the pool back on the top floor. A loud noise accompanies McGrath's roar, the entire elevator lobby collapses and seawater floods the surrounding area, turning it into a lone island. The floor between you and the lone island cracks and collapses, turning into a sea trench. To crash this party with an invitation that doesn't belong to you, accompanied by hedonistic and cowardly companions, and now to utter some nice-sounding nonsense only after the bad things have happened, I've been watching you 
I've been wanting to eliminate you this whole time. You obviously don't fully trust Miss Cabernet. Why do you still keep sticking to her side? 